Hello again everyone, Dennis Sullivan here, Sports Snippets on a Sunday the 20th here of September, Week 2 NFL, Miami Dolphins fall to 0-2 with a loss to the Buffalo Bills today by a score of 31-28. to Please don't forget to go ahead and like the content or go ahead and hit that like button if you feel the need to do so. Now, of course... That is, if I've earned your like today, then go ahead and go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, Sports Snippets with Dennis Sullivan, if you haven't had the chance to do so. You can also find me on my podcast on various platforms at the same channel name, Sports Snippets with Dennis Sullivan. So let's get right into it, guys. Another... I'm not going to say quit. In a way, this game could have gone either way. I mean, week one, we were beat fair and square by the Patriots. Week two, yes, we were beat fair and square by the Bills. But you'd like to think, I mean, we had a little bit better chance here in this one, especially with a lead with a little over 10 minutes left. But let's get into the game, guys, and the breakdown. And let's get into the story, or at least what I think was the story of this particular game. As the Dolphins fall, as mentioned, 31-28 to run their record to 0-2 on the young season. Moving the football and scoring points was really not the problem here for the Dolphins in this one. If you notice the way it started, though, I was thinking to myself, you know what, this is going to be one of those games we're going to lose like 17-6 to or something crazy like that which has happened, of course, uh, to all teams many times. I'm thinking it's going to be one of those games. Uh, all of a sudden, it just seemed like once the Dolphins figured out how to move the ball, with a, with a fair amount of underneath passes, they were getting their lanes there, they were getting some spacing, which is a common term you hear used. Then things started to change for the better, and not only kept the Dolphins in this game, it almost turned out to be a victory, but not quite the case at the very end. So let's get into it, guys. I'm going to run some statistics by you, then we'll get into a few more keys of the game, and then we'll go ahead and look ahead to week three. Ryan Fitzpatrick certainly was not the problem at all today. He was 30 out of 46, 326 yards. He did throw for two touchdowns. He didn't throw any interceptions. He was sacked three times. Pretty good performance, though by Ryan Fitzpatrick, who also would add 12 yards on the ground on three carries. Miles Gask Gaskin, once again, was pretty impressive. Uh, if you've noticed, the Dolphins are very much running back committee. If you look at how it's the, the, the touches are spread out, it's almost like a New England Patriot type setup where you, know, you get maybe six, seven, eight carries, and that's about it. Miles Gaskin had 46 yards on seven carries. Very productive. Matt Breida looked good, too. 37 yards uh, on the ground on seven carries. Also, we had Jordan Howard, who only had five carries for four yards. He did have the touchdown run, though, uh, later in the game. And, you know, Jordan Howard not quite finding the holes yet. You know, he's getting used to the new offense as well. Oh, a really nice addition to the Dolphins. Jakeem Grant had two yards on the ground on one carry. Mike Gusecki, now the passing attack, we talked last week, I would bring up how Mike Gusecki has to get involved earlier in these games. That was the case today, guys. That was definitely the case. Mike Gusecki with a breakout performance, eight catches for 129 yards. Are you kidding me? And a touchdown? He was targeted 11 times. That was a team high, 11 targets. Gusecki, you know, one of those tight ends that kind of looks like a wide receiver out there. Looking really good for the Dolphins. Isaiah Ford had a nice game. He was targeted nine times. I'm thinking maybe Devontae wasn't quite 100%. Let's throw the ball a little bit more to Isaiah Ford. Devontae coming off that uh, concern with the hamstring. So Isaiah Ford would finish with 77 yards receiving on seven catches and those nine targets. Devontae Parker... Five catches, 53 yards, still pretty steady. He did have a, a touchdown catch, a two-yard reception there for a touchdown in the first half. He was still targeted, was Devante, eight times. Miles Gaskin out of the backfield, 36 yards receiving. 
on six catches. So he had 46 yards on the ground, 36 yards receiving. That's pretty good, a little over 80 yards total offense for Miles Gaskin. Preston Williams had a 26-yard reception. That real nice catch and play he made to set up the Dolphins' first score there on the right sideline. Really nice concentration. Of course, Preston would have what looked to be a key drop there in the second half on the fourth and goal play. You know, you look at it on TV, it might have been a little bit different where he was, uh, you know, there was hands kind of coming in there. So it, some, sometimes these things look a little bit easier in our eyes as far as, oh, he should have had it. But in real life, with the game moving so fast, you know, it still still did look kind of, it looked like a drop to me, though. Um, Preston Williams, though, very valuable part of the of the passing attack for the Dolphins, though not one of his more productive games, although he did make the really nice, really nice play there in the first half. Also on the defensive side of things, Nick Needham, guys, he was uh, nice. I noticed he was definitely very active uh, for the Dolphins. He would have six tackles in this game and also six assists. So his productivity and really his activity, I mean, I see him everywhere out there. He's like moving around. Looking, uh, looking really, really good, real productive for the Miami Dolphins. Going to the snippets board, guys, today it was a day for Josh Allen, who basically is your player in the AFC after two weeks. I mean, he probably is your, I'm going to say maybe even week two player of the week in the AFC. It's only two weeks into the season, but the guy's having a tremendous year so far. He would really light it up today. 25 out of 36, 424 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. He was only sacked once. I mean, this guy played phenomenal, and a big part of his effectiveness was the fact that he just simply would make big plays. I noticed a lot of kind of touch passes from Josh Allen. I didn't, now of course I'm a, a Dolphin fan. I really don't watch the Bills other than the two games we play them. I don't quite remember that really from last year. Really nice touch passes thrown by Josh Allen. The Buffalo wide receivers were a big factor today. Stefan Diggs came up huge. Wide receiver they picked up from Minnesota Vikings, eight catches, 153 yards, and a touchdown. He was targeted 13 times. This is Josh Allen's go-to guy. John Brown, we've heard the name before. He's hurt the Dolphins before. We've seen this movie with John Brown before. 82 yards re receiving on four catches, a real nice average. He's a little over 20 yards a catch with those numbers on six targets. I mean, he's very effective wide receiver, especially when he plays us, it seems. And it's a nice tandem, Diggs, Brown, and Cole Beasley. That's a nice one, two, three punch. If not, maybe the most underrated part of the Bills is their wide receiving core. That's pretty impressive. Cole Beasley himself would have 70 yards receiving on five catches. And he had that big catch in the second half that took the ball deep into Dolphin territory when the momentum was swinging and Buffalo was getting the momentum back. So, yeah, the Buffalo wide receivers are something that need to be brought up in the conversation, not to take any credit away from Josh Allen, but these Buffalo wide receivers were very impressive today. And I must admit, I was very impressed by their productivity and their activity really out on the football field. The Miami Dolphin offense was not the problem today. I put that as number three on the snippets board. Um... Yes, we started a little slow, but once the offense figured things out, once Fitzpatrick was in his rhythm, the running game, once again, really wasn't that bad. I mean, if you look at it from a yard per carry basis here, we really didn't do that bad at all. And the Dolphin offense, I thought, played well enough to win. I'm not going to say every game, but they played well enough to win most games. Definitely half, you know, if they play like that, in their next four games, they're definitely one in two of those four games, maybe even three. But there's a lot more to just how the offense plays, of course. But right now, that was a big improvement between week one and week two. Of course, week one, we had to go against the Patriot defense, which, as we all know, that's, um, you know, that's a big factor right there. So New England's 
defense is definitely, I would say, New England's defense definitely better than Buffalo's defense. Not by a landslide, but they are a better unit. At the end of the day, guys, this is the number that counts. The Dolphins are 0 and 2 on the young season. We can look at it however we want. Uh, we have played two good teams, but they both resulted in losses. I mean, these are probably two playoff teams in Buffalo and New England. Um, for the Bills, also Isaiah McKenzie at 47 yards receiving. They really spread it out on two catches for McKenzie. Buffalo really spread the ball out, and I talk about their three big receivers, but you also had a few other contributions. Dawson Knox had a 38-yard catch. Singletary would have two catches, 20 yards out of the backfield, as would Moss out of the backfield, one catch, seven yards. Gabriel Davis, are you kidding me with that catch he made in the end zone? An amazing play. I mean, so as a unit, I mean, these Buffalo receivers and the receiving core, Davis on that six-yard receiving catch, and Reggie Gillum had the one-yard TD reception. So this Buffalo receiving core... And Buffalo passing attack is definitely improved. But as stated, at the end of the day, this is what we're looking at, guys. An 0-2 start, which leads us to what appears to be almost a must-win coming up in a few short days on the short week against the Jaguars, guys, on Thursday Night Football coming up. Are you kidding me? That's going to be on the 24th of September. Jaguars-Dolphins. Uh, Jaguars come in at 1-1, one and, one, and they lost a tough one today to, I believe it was Tennessee. I was looking, they were down by a while, for, they were down early by, I think it was a couple of scores. And didn't really watch the game, was just kind of following it statistically and on my phone. And they wound up losing, I think, by just like about a field goal. That won't be an easy game. So coming up on Thursday is going to be Jacksonville Jaguars, Miami Dolphins. So guys... Overall, saw some improvement there with the offense, looking a lot better, but we still are 0-2, and, and right? That's not the way you want to start a season, so we got to get a win under our belt. Then I'll feel a little bit better about talking about, well, we got this improved, we got that improved. Um, let's just get a little bit better with, you know, in some of these areas such as giving up the big reception, giving up the big play. The defense is giving up too many big plays right now. We have to tighten that up. And I think we can get a couple of wins here to kind of make the, the season a little more interesting. So for now, this is Dennis Sullivan saying, I will see you, yes, you, next time. Go ahead and hit that like button if you feel the need to do so. And what I'll do is I'll catch up with you later in the week, and we will discuss Dolphins, Jaguars, Jacksonville Jaguars, Miami Dolphins, coming up next Thursday night. Talk to you soon. Thank you.